All right, guys. Hello. Hi. Hi. Thanks for coming out to our uh, ops lecture four. If you guys have a CS31 midterm, we'll try to go through this pretty quickly so you guys can go and study for that because it's I'm sure you're having lots of fun with that. So, <laughs> But before we introduce the new topics, let's go over a little bit of review uh, for uh, some commonly gotten wrong things from the past couple of projects. So let's do a quick overview of the schematic symbols. So on this side, we have a battery, right? And over here, we have two different things. One's called VCC, and one's called ground. You've noticed in the project two that we used the, the two icons over here on the left side, um, which might have been a little bit less familiar. So just to show you the correlation, um, both the top VCC and the positive side of the battery are your high voltages and the ground. And the negative side of the battery are low voltages. So just, uh, just a quick reminder in case that was a little bit confusing. Because it's like this on the next project, too. Okay. <laughs> you want to take this one? Yeah, sure. So, um, uh, as you guys know, if um, you get too big of a voltage drop across your LED, you can fry the LED. So, um, each color has a specific voltage that it needs to have across it. So, like the red ones need a 2 volt voltage drop, and the blue ones need like a 3.4 volt voltage <coughs> drop. And since you know the battery is 3.7 volts, uh, you know, and you know that they uh, they take 20 milliamps of current. You can calculate the voltage you need across your resistor to have the right voltage across your LED. Like that. So everyone follows the math, right? It's pretty easy at this point. Anyone still confused? No. Good. Okay. Next one. All right. Some tips for soldering. Uh, so project two is probably the first time a lot of you guys have done soldering. So it might have been a little bit tricky to figure out, you know, how, how should you approach this. So same thing is going to be applied for the next project. We're going to have a 555 timer in the middle. So if you start with your 8-pin socket where the 555 timer goes, you attach that to the middle of your perf board. Then from there, you can just kind of work outwards, go pin by pin, starting at pin 1, oh, what does pin 1 do, and then what does pin 2 do? And if you do it systematically like that, that should reduce the amount of um, wrong things you put in the wrong places. Next, uh, you don't have to follow the breadboard exactly. So some of you guys, uh, I noticed you copied everything like exactly one-to-one -one scale from the breadboard onto the perf board. That works. But um, you could do it a little bit better. So you can optimize the layout of things so you don't have to make as long of solder traces. If you really like making really long solder traces, then by all means, go ahead and do that. But a lot of people don't. So you can, you can move things around wherever is most convenient. This kind of goes with bullet point number one. You just start with pin one and work around it. OK, next one. OK, yeah, using solder traces and wires efficiently. So. Um, in this past project and in the next project, some of you guys noticed that you could connect pins 2 and 6 together in between the pins of the socket. And that's totally a valid thing to do. So if you look for things like that, you'll save yourself a lot of work, and you won't have as many wires to get in your way later. A couple things I noticed, yeah. too, that aren't on here is that um, for the dip sockets, it's better if you tape them on yeah. and then solder on the back rather than trying to bend the pins. You don't get as good of a soldering on the back of the eight pin dip sockets if you bend the pins. So that's uh, really useful. But, um. <laughs> okay, one, one sec. We're having some technical difficulties. Another thing I noticed was that while you guys were soldering, there was um, some people had these things called a cold solder joint. And what that is is when you have two solders like, in, a, in a solder trail, where you have they're like right next to each other, bumping up against each other, but they're not actually soldered together. They look like they're connected, but they're not actually connected. And you can uh, fix this by running your soldering iron over the, the solder trail to connect all of those solder joints. So did anyone have any specific questions about soldering things that you want to know, is it legal, is it not legal? No, you guys are all experts now. OK, great, because Project 3 is going to have a lot more soldering. 
<laughs> oh yeah, and, and lastly, you can push components all the way through. So like resistors, capacitors, those type of thing, you don't have to leave them hanging in the air if you don't want. You can go ahead and pull those all the way through, solder it, and then cut off the extra. It, it doesn't really make a difference, but you know, whatever. Huh? What do you hear? I don't know. Okay. Okay, uh, so <laughs> next thing we want to review is push buttons. So a lot of people made some mistakes about connecting the push buttons. So there's two ways that a push button could be connected internally. One, the T1 prime and T2 prime, whatever those pins, they're connected, or, or that diagram. Basically, the thing is two that are directly across from each other, they could be connected internally. <laughs> So one way you deal with that is we use opposite corners of the push buttons. So uh, for example, is this laser pointer? OK. If, if you connect something over here, you would also want to connect the other side down here. That way, no matter which orientation they're connected internally, you'll be guaranteed to get the correct uh, connection that you're looking for. Another way to figure it out, too, is if you have a, a digital multimeter, those yellow things we have in the lab, you can put it into a mode called continuity mode which is, it looks like three uh, <coughs> like half circles getting b bigger and bigger. And what that does is when you touch the two pins together of the DMM, it makes a beeping noise. So if you touch two of these pins together and it makes a beeping noise and you're not touching the button, that means that those pins are shorted and you shouldn't use that as your button. You should use the other two pins. Yeah. So did, did any of you guys use the continuity check uh, in project two? Right, so quite a few of you. It's a very useful tool for debugging things, especially when we're doing solder traces, because a lot of times you can't tell whether or not it's connected or not connected until you actually try it. Okay, so now introducing project three is called the piano. It uh, stands for pulse instantiated a stable nerdy organ. We didn't come up with that name. <laughs> if you want to know, Arvin, did you come up with that name? So okay. One of last year's ops leads came up with that name, so we just decided to stick with it because it's kind of cute. Um, basically, what it is is an advanced version of the digital synthesizer that you guys did in Project 1, where instead of using um, photoresistors to control it, you're using a series of push buttons and a potentiometer. So this is what one looks like. So hopefully this works. Yeah. Don't do live demonstrations, but... Um, yeah. So the idea is you'll have a little bit more granular control over um, the sounds that it makes. Oh. <laughs> right, so each, each button creates a different tone and the potentiometer <laughs> twisting it <laughs> makes Sorry. the different tones, a uh, different selection of tones for you to choose from. <coughs> so let's take a quick look at the schematic. If you ignore this part over here on the right, it looks very <laughs> similar to the one that we've done from Project 1 and Project 2. Because again, we're using the 555 timer <laughs> in the middle, and we've connected some outputs to it, some resistors to vary, vary it. And um, yeah, in fact, that's, it's pretty much the same as if you took like a little bit of Project 1, a little bit of Project 2, put it all together, you get this. So uh, one thing to note is this time we have nothing on pin 5. That's, that's the big difference. Anything yet? Okay. Good? Good. Okay. Next one. So, again, we're going to be asking you guys to solder in this project. So, as always, you do your prototype on the breadboard first, make sure everything works, and then you transfer that over onto your perf board. So, in this picture is a good example of soldering traces. So, you notice that they don't have any abnormally large bumps, there's no really, really thin parts. Everything for the most part is making a good contact to the copper pads across the, across the path that you want to go on. And for the most part, it's neat and organized, right? So that's, this one too is very, is very clean. Um, one thing that you might want to do is keep uh, long parallel parts <coughs> of the solder farther apart from each other. That way you don't have as much in unintentional solder bridges in the middle. Um, but yeah. So again, using the 8-pin socket for the 555 timer, and you're also going to be using uh, female headers to put your speaker in. What female headers are, are their little, um, it's like a little socket with a pin stuck to it, so you solder the pin on and you've got a socket coming out. 
Um, we'll show you some pictures of that later. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's what I wrote here. Um, Oh yeah, another thing is remember to use the 22 gauge solid core wire when you're doing your prototypes. Um, in the past, we've had a lot of people where the only thing wrong with their project was that their wires were too thick and therefore not making a very good connection. So avoid the th really thick brown wire that we have. Avoid the stranded wire. Um, you guys can also use jumper wires. We have a box of those, but don't solder those on. Make sure those get returned because those are reusable. Oh, and lastly, if your speaker is not connecting very well because the, the legs are so thick, you can actually solder a piece of wire onto each one of the leads and then use that to plug into your breadboard. That way it'll get a more uh, reliable connection that way. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, so um, one thing that we sort of noticed in all of our different projects in IEEE is the lab has been getting progressively more messy as the year goes on. and. Uh, it's really hard because there's a lot of people in the lab, and we know that. It gets really congested like late at night or on the weekends, and it's really hard to keep track of what's yours and what's not yours. But um, just something to keep in mind is that we share the space with three, oth like three other projects. So it's really important that we keep our share and make sure that we keep the lab clean. Yeah. So um, another thing is we've noticed people have been leaving soldering irons on overnight, mm -hmm. which is a huge fire hazard. <coughs> so make sure you turn off the soldering irons when you're done. Or if you see someone not using a soldering iron, just make sure to turn it off. Mm -hmm. Good. And yeah. so, so, so just some other tips. Put things back where they came from, obviously. Throw away your trash. You can be nice and like you know sweep up all the little soldering crumbs. That would be great, too. Um, and push in the chairs. OK, great. So here's some comparison pictures <laughs> between what the lab <laughs> looks like when it's messy and when it looks like when it's clean. So of course we all want it to look like when it's clean, which means you know things are stowed away nicely, the cables aren't all over the place, you don't have pencils and trash and tape all over. So this is kind of going back to the things on this slide. Um, you know, just treat everything like it is your own personal workspace, because really it is, and uh, keep it clean. Next one is, yeah, so in fact, we've, have, we've been having such a large uh, problem with uh, people not cleaning it up that the first time that we see you just blatantly you know, walk away from your soldering iron, leave it on, and you've got trash everywhere, we'll give you a verbal warning. But then after that, that's $15 coming right off of your deposit. So I know you guys all want to keep your entire deposit. So make sure you clean up. Make sure you uh, help other people who maybe forgot to clean up. Good. And also, uh, remember to do all of your projects by the due dates. Um, I know it's been getting a little bit more difficult as classes have picked up. We're getting into midterms. But um, we picked you guys all at the beginning of the year because we thought that you were good kids and that would do all the projects <laughs> and that sort of stuff. So please, please don't prove us wrong, OK? And do your projects on time. Both Good. me and Ted have been putting a lot of time to make sure you guys finish your projects. So um, if you have any questions, any like problems with your projects, feel free to talk to us, email us, message us, because okay. we're there for you guys. Good. So. Good. Everyone good? Any questions about that? No? OK. All right. Next slide. Some upcoming events. <coughs> uh, how many of you guys have heard about General Board? OK. Good. There should be more of you guys interested in General Board. What General Board is is like our, it's kind of like an intern program. Basically, you get into smaller groups with some of the officers, and you get to know a little bit more about uh, how <coughs> it typically works. You get to make more friends. It's great. Um, if you're interested in that, uh, 6 p.m., 4760 on the 18th, come check it out. Uh, all the different uh, group leads will be there giving you an introduction into what their group is going to be about, how to apply for it, that sort of stuff. So definitely come check that out. And also, we're going to be having our very own social with C3 called Karaoke Night. <laughs> yeah, so who's excited for that? <laughs> oh, OK. Good, good, OK, great. Um, so we're going to have free food and free <laughs> And like entertainment activities and games. And I'm sure you guys all like that. So on the 20th, that's a Friday night, 
what else would you be doing on a Friday night? Studies. <laughs> nah. <laughs> who, who studies on a Friday night, right? Come and hang out with IEEE, Ops, C3, uh, find your new friends <laughs> and old friends and everyone. If you can, try to get Smallberg to come too. He almo we almost got him to go to one last year. Yeah. He kind of walked in and then like ran out. <laughs> <laughs> if you can get him to come, yeah. That'd be great. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Anyone have any questions about any of the things that we did tonight? If not, you guys can go ahead and check in with the Android app. I'm pretty sure the iPhone app is not going to work. So you could try it. In fact, if it if you try it and it works, let us know because Oh, wow. What kind of iPhone do you have? 5C works. Anyone anyone else iPhones work? What kind of iPhone do you have? Six. Six works? Yeah, my first two. Oh, nice. I have a five. All right, good to know. Sorry.